When I was 17, I fell in love with this guy who seemed absolutely perfect and charming and handsome and the dream person to be with. But very quickly, the red flags started piling up and I chose to ignore them. And so I ended up in a relationship for a year and a half with this guy who did not treat me well, who told me that sometimes he felt like I was worthless, who told me that my face was crooked and I wasn't as pretty as his ex-girlfriends, who encouraged me to lose weight even though I was at a normal healthy body weight and who also used my faith in an unhealthy way, who said all these things that you've dreamed of doing, you've been speaking in youth group throughout the years, you've been dreaming of traveling and speaking around the world, well, you can't do that because you're a woman. The Bible is very clear on this, you cannot do that. I don't know why God gave you these gifts when you can never use them because you're a woman. And I stayed with him for a year and a half. I believed him when he said that no one else would ever love me the way he did. And he was right, no one else has ever loved me that poorly. And so today I want to share the six things that helped me find freedom and healing from that relationship. And I hope they can help you too. Welcome back to another episode of Life Advice You Don't Hear in Church. This is a heavier one today. My name is Tiffany Dawn and hit subscribe to see more videos like this. Also, today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. You can see the link down below and I'll tell you more about them in a little bit. When I ended the relationship with that guy, which, oh my goodness, I tried ending it like a thousand times and could not hold on to it. But when I finally ended it once and for all, I felt like God could never use me again. Like I had just messed up my life so badly. And honestly, I was like, I don't know who you are anymore, God. I don't know if I want anything to do with you if you're the God that this boyfriend said you were. And even though I was scared of being alone and didn't like not having that sense of identity in a relationship, I was also terrified of dating again. I was so sure that any other guy would treat me exactly like my ex-boyfriend had, and I didn't wanna be broken like that again. On top of that, I was also drowning in disordered eating, I had gotten too thin and was struggling with my relationship with food, and I didn't think I'd ever be able to come back from it. I didn't think I could ever really heal from that relationship. Like I felt like I was damaged goods and that's how I would be forever. But these six things helped me slowly, slowly begin to heal. So I wanna share them with you today. The first thing I had to do was set healthy boundaries. Now, obviously I was not in a physically abusive relationship. And if you have been, I strongly encourage you to call the domestic abuse hotline or talk with a community organization about how to get to a safe place. Because a big part of your boundaries is going to be making sure that you are safe. And the things that I share in this video might look a little different for you if you're coming out of a physically abusive relationship. But for me, healthy boundaries meant at first I was stalking him on social media. I wanted to know what he was up to. Were there any other girls in the pictures with him? What did they look like? Were they prettier than me? Were they skinnier than me? Like all these things. But the more I was focused on what he was doing and what he was up to, it kept me from moving on. It kept me from getting past him. Even if I was just having event session with my girlfriends again and again saying, here's why he was so awful, I was still focused on him. I couldn't move on with my life as long as I was still so focused on him. On top of that, I was trying to talk with some of his good friends because I was like, well, now we're good friends. And so let me talk with his friend about how hard this breakup has been. And it still makes me feel a little bit attached to my ex, right? And his best friend was this great guy, but I was using him to still kind of stay attached and I needed to just cut things off. I know it doesn't sound like a Christian thing to do, but you know what it is. I think in a lot of cases, the best and healthiest thing to do is to just cut off all communication. You are kind of cutting them out of your life. And you know what, if they don't like it, if he doesn't like it, if his friends don't like it, too bad. There are consequences for our own behavior and they are learning that now. They cannot treat somebody that way and expect them to keep staying in a relationship with them. This is a learning experience for them. Their emotions are on them. It's not on you. You just do what you need to do to heal. The second thing is give yourself a timed space. Give yourself a timeline where you're going to take space from the relationship because afterwards it's so easy to second guess things, to just remember the good or to kind of gloss over the bad parts and think, well, maybe I should have given him another chance. Maybe this time he really has changed, even though he's said that 50 times before and he never has. Maybe this time things really will be different. What if I'm alone forever? What if nobody else ever loves me again? All these questions and this, this self-doubt and the second guessing come up, especially in the beginning stages of moving on from a relationship or if you've already been seen with some other chick out in public. And so give yourself a timeline. Say, 
three months, I'm not going to indulge the second guessing. Those thoughts can come in and I'm just going to observe them and let them go. I'm not going to think about getting back together with him. I'm not going to consider that till three months are by. And it can be so scary to do that because it's like, well, what if he's gone on to somebody else and I've lost my chance forever? But you're with somebody who treats you right and also who wants to be with you, not just in a relationship, but with you. And so if they've moved on to somebody else, take that as confirmation that this was not meant to be, at the very least, not meant to be right now. Number three, start counseling or mentorship or something to help you figure out what parts of this relationship were unhealthy because you might know some of the parts that were unhealthy but you might not know all of them a, a few years after i broke up with that guy i was still struggling so much i could not manage to date somebody i'd meet these great guys i'd really want to date them and i would feel like i was going to vomit all over them because i was so afraid of dating again and i said to my pastor and his wife i was like is this normal and they're like no, this is you need healing. And so I started meeting with them and sharing things about the past relationship that I'd never shared with anybody. I'd been too embarrassed. Just seeing their responses, seeing the things they said, wow, like this is so unhealthy. This is so damaging. Like nobody should treat you this way. That was so healing because there were some parts that I like didn't even think twice about. I just assumed this is what a normal relationship is like. He was my first boyfriend. I was like, maybe this is just how it is. And to hear them say, no, that's not right. That helps a lot for me. So if you're like, yes, I want to try counseling, but I don't know where to start, check out my sponsors, BetterHelp. They will connect you with a therapist who's licensed and credentialed and experienced, and you can meet with them from anywhere in the world because it's all online. And if you're looking specifically for Christian therapy or Christian counseling, then you can actually choose their Christian therapy experience where they'll hook you up with a licensed, experienced therapist who's also a Christian. And then you can decide with this Christian therapist, do you want to keep your sessions strictly clinical or do you want to involve scripture and prayer in them? It's up to you. So check them out at the link in my description for 10% off your first month with them. And in fi if finances are an issue, they have scholarships you can apply for as well. I thought like, I just got to pray enough, read my Bible enough, spend enough time and Jesus will heal my heart. We need people. And I'm convinced that you cannot fully heal from a bad relationship if you don't have other people speaking into your life and showing you the areas where it's still affecting you and helping you see what was not normal. Number four, slowly forgive. And this forgiveness, honestly, it's for your own sake. This is not another get off scot-free pass where you give them another something else and another piece of you and say, it's no big deal. No, forgiveness is saying what happened to me was awful. It was wrong. It hurt me, but I am going to let this go for my own sake, honestly. Like I'm gonna get rid of this idea that they owe me, that they, I need to get even with them because that is still keeping me attached to them. And I need to break that off in order to heal. I remember a few months after I broke up with that ex, I was driving home and I really felt like God put in my heart, Tiffany, you need to pray blessings over his life. And I knew this was like a part of me learning how to forgive him. And I was like, okay, God, bless him with a lightning bolt to his head. And I felt like the, the Holy Spirit was like, that's not cutting it. So I was like, okay, bless him with a spouse who will like stand up to him and show him that he is not God's gift to the world. And it was like still not enough. So I was like, okay, fine. Like bless him, bless this, bless this. And as I started praying, it was like this huge release. Like I just started crying and this weight came off of me. It was like something was just kind of like broken in my heart in a good way. Almost like I let it go. I let him go. There was no more this attachment of, well, he owes me an apology. We need to get even. It was like, I let that go. And I was able to start finding freedom. Forgiveness is a slow process. It is not an overnight thing. It comes in layers over time. But as we begin to slowly let them go over and over, it breaks a little more of the power of that relationship over us. Forgiveness sets us free. It is a secret weapon. Number five, exposure therapy. What I mean by this is exposing yourself to a healthy relationship. I've heard that there's this idea in some counseling circles where if you've experienced some, a trauma in a certain area, like maybe you've been really hurt in a church or something like that, or maybe a dog bit you, you need to slowly expose yourself to healthy situations healthy churches or dogs that don't bite, you know, like to be able to start to heal from that. And that was true for me. I had a really hard time trusting guys because I thought every guy must be like my ex-boyfriend deep down and they would all hurt you in the end. And I was angry at all the guys around me and I wanted to punish them all for what my ex had done. 
and I had to get in good, healthy relationships with good guys. And starting to build those friendships was very healing to me, to have guys in my life who did not treat women that way, who treated me with kindness and respect, and I never felt like I wasn't enough for them. And it wasn't romantic. We never dated. It was just a healing friendship. And then slowly I was able to go on some dates and I remember meeting with my mentors about the next serious boyfriend I had after my first ex. Years later, I had wanted a boyfriend for so long, but every time a guy was too interested, I'd run because I was so scared. So finally I was like, I really want to date again. There's this great guy who they knew who was at my church and I was like, I... He wants, he's asked me out, I'm scared to death, but I kind of want to do this. And so they met with me every few weeks throughout our relationship just to talk and process and help me through that. And at the end of the day, we weren't right for each other and we broke up, but I left that relationship feeling more whole than before because I was like, this is what a good guy is like. It was so healing for me. And I, I hope, and I like to think that it was a positive experience for him too that we were able to grow and heal in some ways through that relationship. So exposure therapy. This isn't something you do all at once. This is not rebounding into another relationship, but over time, as you begin to heal, getting some of that exposure therapy can help. And lastly, healing comes in layers. So expect it to take a while. Different layers come up throughout life. When I first got married, all of a sudden, this new layer of healing from my ex came up. I, I was like, I thought I had dealt with all this stuff. I thought I had worked through it. And then I'm like, why am I expecting James to treat me like my ex would have? You know, it's like all of a sudden these new life transitions can bring up another layer and it's hard and it sucks. But the beautiful thing is you end up more healed and more whole than before if you go with it, if you go with the healing process. So expect layers to come up in the future. You're not going to heal 100% right now. In the future, more layers will come up. That's okay. It'll just get you more healed and more whole than before if you let it. So comment below, what has helped you in healing from past relationships? And don't forget to check out BetterHelp if you're looking for a therapist. I love you guys and I'll see you next week. Bye.